Hi, my name is Gregory Haudegui, and I want to thank you for joining me in another episode of Finding Light in the Dark. Lately, it seems like the weather has been against my, my journey. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot of winds, a lot of dense clouds. Whoa, whoa, no. even uh, strong rains. Horrible! Oh, no, no stargazing. While the weather and the quarantine kept me locked indoors, I decided to prepare this video for you where I share the equipment for astrophotography uh, that I use in order to capture deep space, planets, our moon, etc. So stay tuned while I'm out here and just enjoy some of the sun that we finally got here in San Diego. Bam. Welcome to my studio. You will be seeing more of this background setup. Uh, please let me know what you think. I'd like to get some feedback of what I got going here. Now, to get things started and to talk about the equipment that I'm working with, uh, I think it's very important that you at home also understand how a telescope works in order to get a better idea of what it is that I'm doing to collect these uh, planetary images, uh, these deep, deep space structures like nebulas or galaxies. But there's two main types of telescopes, including the reflecting telescope and a refracting telescope. The difference between those two is that a reflecting telescope uses mirrors in order to reflect light into focus through an eyepiece. Um, the other type of telescope, the refracting telescope, uses lenses instead of mirrors to bend light into focus, right? So one uses mirrors to reflect, reflect one uses lenses to refract light into focus. There's different reasons why they both have pros and cons. I personally prefer my reflectors. Uh, that's the experience I've had with them. So for example, here on my left, I have a 12 inch Dobsonian telescope. Uh, this guy's a Skywatcher brand and what's special about it is that it's known as a light bucket because of the huge mirror that it has at the bottom that collects light from very dim and far away objects in space. But the con of it is that it's a manual telescope. I have to manually move it and if I point it to the moon, after a few seconds, the moon is gonna be panning across the field of view. So eventually it's gonna be out of the field of view. So if you look through this telescope, you'll see everything is gonna be slowly moving across the image. That's because it's manual. Now, the new telescope that I got my hands on, it's very special because one, it's uh, computerized. It has a dual fork mount, mount. So that means it's very heavy duty and also it has a go-to function with a control where I just punch directions and it, it finds structures for me in space. So let me introduce to you uh, my R2-D2, also known as the Celestron CPC-800 with Edge HD optics. What that means is, it's a lot of words, for a telescope that basically combines a reflecting telescope and a refracting telescope. So this is known as a catadioptric Schmidt, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Excuse my pronunciation there. But what it does is that on the back here, it has an eight inch mirror that collects light. As light comes in through here from whatever item I'm pointing at, it bounces off of the mirror in the back. Uh, you see this glass in the front, that would be the primary lens where the light is um, it's focused into the mirror in the back 
The mirror in the back reflects light into this. Behind this wheel, there's another secondary mirror that reflects lights back to this hole right here. Here is where I place my eyepieces, filters, and cameras in order to capture whatever the telescope is pointing at. Yeah, let's get more into depth. That was fun, but let's get serious now. This is R2-D2 in its final form. Here I have it mounted with its uh, dual fork arm on top of the Celestron uh, Equatorial Wedge HD Pro. I'll explain what that is. And all of this is on top of a heavy duty tripod. What this means is that the telescope uh, can sustain a lot of equipment and attachments to it. So any additional weight it's not going to make the telescope less sturdy or unbalanced or shaky so I'm very excited to master uh, all the potential that this telescope comes with because I haven't even learned how to fully align it yet. If you look at my Instagram page you'll see that all my stars still have this field rotation or they have this uh, um, star trails on them. Uh, so my polar alignment is not perfect but I'm, like I said I'm excited to master this hobby soon I'll get these nice pictures. So as an amateur astronomer, you can focus on two things. You can do either visual astronomy or astrophotography. Through visual astronomy, it's very similar equipment that you might need. Maybe you don't need all these mounts because uh, the telescope doesn't require a lot of heavy attachments. So all it needs is an eyepiece here, maybe a Barlow lens that multiplies the magnification. And for example, this is the Mi Series 5000 HD eyepiece set. What it comes with is six eyepieces that produce a very wide field and sharp image. Uh, so if you're a visual astronomer, I, I very much encourage you to get your hands on these guys. Now, with astrophotography, uh, there's a lot of things you need to consider. Uh, if the telescope shakes uh, a little, because you're taking an image of something that's so small, so far away, the image is not going to come out as sharp as if you were to just take a selfie with, uh, with your own cell phone. Uh, because the light that the moon or the stars or planets or nebulas is so faint, it's so far away, the cameras need to be staring at this uh, object for longer than usual in order, in order to collect enough light for it to be uh, visible for us. Now, here I have a astronomy dedicated camera. It's a ZWO Ozzy 178. Uh, it's a color camera. I also have the uh, black and white camera. I have the color camera and the black and white camera. They're the same design. Uh, I'll explain in more videos what the difference between these two cameras is. But for now, as light travels on this end, bounces to, from the primary mirror to the secondary mirror, back this way down the path of light. Filtered through this filter wheel, I got the red light, red filter, green and blue filter. And I also have this astronomic infrared pass filter, which allows for more details to be visible with the camera. Uh, regardless of the weather conditions. So even if the atmosphere is very turbulent, uh, this filter allows for better details to be seen. Down here, hidden between the tripod and the dual fork mount with the telescope, is the Celestron Equatorial Wedge HD Pro. And this is very significant to all this equipment. And I didn't learn about this until I bought this telescope about field rotation. This. Uh, when taking long exposures, as objects travel from, from sunrise to sunset, 
side of our night sky or from east to west things don't just stay on one angle for example as our moon rises on the east sets on the west it kind of does this rotation uh, throughout the night so in order to correct for this field rotation this is what the equatorial mount is for take advantage and show you my new moon uh, coaster designs also I got these on metal prints hit me up if you're interested something else I can tell you about the setup is that the field of view that the camera captures uh, is very narrow so this is perfect for very tiny or very small objects deep in space like planets such as Mars Jupiter Saturn or if you want to look deep into certain nebulas or galaxies you want to get a wider field of view that's where the star Arizona's hyperstar field reducer kicks in I'll show you what it does with this setup i move the camera from the back to the front where the secondary mirror is at this telescope is fast star capable what that means is that i'm able to adapt this hyperstar field reducer with the camera and a filter slider so I can place different filters in there to focus light uh, from different elements. What's special about this setup with the high square star in the front of the secondary mirror is that instead of producing a very narrow field of view it produces a wider field of view. So now with this I can actually capture the full moon uh, because on this side I couldn't fit the moon into the field of view because this camera has a very small uh, sensor that it's cropped into a very small size. I would have to get my hands on a larger camera with a larger sensor in order to grab bigger fields. But for now, this does the job. Well, I think that covers it all. Thank you so much for joining me once again in my astrophotography journey. I can't wait to share more of my experiences of how I continue finding light in the dark. See you next time.